Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club and today we're going to be testing whether the Energy Apex can handle running a shallow well jet pump that pressurizes the water for my entire cabin here. So we're going to have two people taking a shower every day, uh, flushing the toilet whenever we need to, washing food, uh, running the dishwasher, running the laundry machine, the washing machine downstairs. All those appliances are run off the electricity from the house. The Apex is just going to be powering the shallow well jet pump, but this is going to be a really cool test because that pump takes about a thousand watts to run and it takes a pretty big surge load to get it going. So this is going to be a really great test to see if the inverter holds up and if it's delivering enough clean power to not damage the pump over a very long period of time. Spoiler alert for those of you that don't want to sit through the experimentation. Yes, it will run this pump. My entire house has been running off this pump, off the Apex, for four weeks. So an entire month, I think that's incredibly cool. I never even took it off after the testing, just to make sure that it didn't damage anything and it's holding up, and it is doing great. How much solar does it take to maintain that? Um, 100 watts, not so much with four hours of sunlight like I have here. 200 watts is that sweet spot. So we have a lot of other information I'm going to cover, so please stick around for the rest of the video. Um, now, for those of you that think that this is a submersible well pump, it is not. This is a shallow well jet pump that pressurizes the house. A submersible pump in a well typically is 240 volts. The Apex is a 120 volt system. Um, and those submersible pumps are usually huge, 240 volt, uh, one and a half horsepower pumps. They do sell them for solar power and they run off 120 volts and they have only 1200 watts of starting to get the water flowing. So you can definitely do that, but if you already have one, chances are it's not gonna work for this. Uh, my setup, it works perfectly uh, with the jet pump down in the basement. So that's what we're gonna be using today for this test. The pump itself is 120 volts, 7.8 amps. So that's 936 watts. It's a Eulatec half horsepower shallow well jet pump. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just hook the Romex coming out of that pump directly into the 30 amp plug on the Apex. And uh, we're just gonna start this up. I'm gonna let you listen to it so you can hear what's going on. And then we're going to do a time lapse showing it going up and down over the days and get to how much solar and everything was required and how well it performed. Um, one thing though, the Energy Apex has been discontinued by Energy for their new system, the Energy Flex. And I will put a link down below that you can take you over to the website so you can see their new version of the Apex that I'm using in this test. But it has a lot of similar features, so I think this is still a very valid test. Uh, you can use that link down below to go check it out, and it'll also give you a huge discount if you decide to purchase one. Um, anyway, so we're going to get right to the test here, and I'm going to take you down there. I've already hooked up the plug, and let's go ahead and let you listen to how it sounds running that pump. So we have, now we have a nice 30 amp power plug here, and we can plug that right in. Like so. Now let's see how she does. Okay, so I actually have a lot of video of me going down there every day to check on it and show you the, the stats and the, the wattage and the remaining battery, but when I put it in here, it's way too long. So I'm just gonna give you the, the results, basically. And if you're using this guy with uh, the 90 amp internal battery alone with no solar, it's gonna last you about 24 hours, uh, depending on how much you use the water pump, but that was my experience with it with no solar. But what we wanna find out is how much solar is required to really keep this going. It absolutely has enough power to run the pump and has been 
for about a month now. I didn't even disconnect it when I was done with this test. It's still down in my basement running my water pump right now just to make sure that nothing was gonna go wrong with the inverter or damage the pump. So it definitely works, but how much solar does that take? So with 100 watt panel, uh, one 100 watt panel, basically it was so close you guys, but I only get four hours of sun where I am here in the mountains. And so while on a couple of different occasions it did, most of the time it was kind of a gradual reduction. And I'm gonna start a time lapse right now that's hooked up to a 100 watt panel. And we're gonna start Monday at I think about 5 p.m and we're gonna let this guy run. So I'm gonna start that so I kinda know when to stop. And we start at 100% and we go through the night and you can see it drops about 30 to 35% just running the inverter. And of course we were using the water pump at night as well, using the bathroom or in the middle of the night or whatever. So it was being used, but typically we lost about 35% overnight. And then I would start to get some wattage and it would charge back up. Here you can see we made it to almost 85% on one day with the 100 watt panel. So it's close, it's really close, but also we had some clouds and some little rain clouds come through and stuff. And whatever it was, it just wasn't quite enough to do it. And by Thursday morning, uh, it finally just fizzled out sometime around three o'clock at night. And I actually did the math on this based off the pictures. It lasted 62 hours or 2.6 days with 100 watts to zero percent. And here you can see it's gonna die in the middle of the night and that is all she wrote so I had to call that time. Um, as we switch to the new time lapse here we're going to start over with 200 watts and the first day I did it I actually turned it off at night. We were at 87 when I turned it off and when I turned it back on we were at 84 so I mean it, it was right there. I didn't lose nearly as much power but of course we couldn't use the bathroom at night. That's not really relevant to the test because at 200 watts we make up that energy every single day. Um, if it's completely rainy and overcast, obviously you won't. But as you can see here, it'll drain that 35% throughout the night. And as soon as it starts getting low, it shoots back up, boom. So it's fully charged because we have 200 watts of solar coming in. And that seems to be the nominal place to be. With 200 watts, it's been running the water for my entire house for four weeks now, which is incredibly cool. If the power ever goes out, my entire house will have pressurized water for showers, whatever. I guess they'd be cold showers, but showers nonetheless. We could do laundry, we could wash dishes, I guess. Um, so I think that's incredibly cool that it was able to do that and it's still doing that for my entire house. Um, I just was frankly too lazy to disconnect it and I was curious just to make sure that we could do a really long run on this and it wasn't gonna damage the pump and, it, and the apex was gonna hold up to that with their inverter. So obviously they make pretty good stuff. It's working really well and it's still down there just because I still need to go down there and disconnect it. So definitely holding up to that kind of abuse if you want to do it for that kind of system uh, or in emergencies. And it's just a testament to how good the inverter is really on that system. So it's working great with 200 watts and that's completely sustainable. I haven't had a single problem with it since I plugged it in. Even with a rainy day here or there, 200 watts seems to be the sweet spot for this particular experiment. Now the Energy Flex is the new version that they're coming out with and they're going for big air on this guy. It's a pretty big system. I can't attest to how good or bad it is because I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but I like all their Energy products. I wish they were still making the Energy Apex because I love that thing. It's been working great. No complaints with that thing whatsoever. Um, the Energy Apex right out of the box um, can take 500 watts of solar charging. The Energy Flex can take 1200 watts of solar. So they are going like for a much bigger system and it's gonna be really close to the same weight as the Apex. So I'm really excited to check this guy out. And uh, you can boost that up to two times with an extra MPPT charge controller uh, to make that like 3600 watts of solar. That's big time array stuff. So that's pretty cool. And they have a DC setup for van lifers and an AC-DC setup for off-grid users and stuff like that, and it's supposed to still be portable. So I'm super excited about the new Flex coming out. Again, a link down below if you wanna go check it out, and if you end up doing pre-sales, which opens in a couple days, May 14th, 2020, um, it'll save you big time at checkout. So please use the code down there, and that's gonna help me out and everything else. So cool test, that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, that really helps me out. And until the next video, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Thanks so much for watching and happy camping.